you thought the series was dead. No? No, no one cares? Okay. One thing that is dead though, is Crash Bandicoot. What's Crash Bandicoot, you may ask, if you're like five years old or hate video games. I don't know why you're here if you hate video games, but eh. But alas, Crash Bandicoot was born to be Sony's mascot, like Mario for Nintendo or the paperclip for Microsoft. Sony was all like, What happened today if we take a Mario? I mean, uh, Crash is a rebacker instead of a... or an It was literally like Sony wanted to make a Mario and put it into a 3D world. Naughty Dog originally gave birth to this nostalgic hero's first few games, not to mention the Mario Kart Bandicoot edition. Then something terrible happened where Naughty Dog was like, Jack Dexter is better than a dumb Bandicoot, and happily gave it away to Eurocom, making Crash Bash and nothing else. <laughs> then Traveller's Tales came along, and then they adopted it to Radical Entertainment. There were other shitty Mario Party and other clones of My Boo Crash. The one game that stands out for me the most isn't the original three. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Nothing is better than the first, how could you say that? Simple. As the first three made a whole generation, and has proven to be one of the most famous games of all time, it's the same fucking game three times. Also, fuck the road to nowhere. Seriously. The game I love the most out of this whole series is Crash to Insanity. Whoops. Crash to Insanity. This game to me is the best in the whole series. Shoot me if you have to. Ha! Oh. Please. Oh. Let me explain why. Okay, so before we start, would you rather play Super Mario or would you play Mario 64? Super Mario! Mario 64? Great. Then we're gonna get on a little bit easier. As you may have guessed, yes, I do think Crash is a Mario clone. You jump on enemies, you get one up, you gotta save a princess. Only difference is the fucking camera angle. Oh, and uh, one's a fucking dog wearing pants. So what did Traveller's Oxford Studio do? They made Mario 64 for Crash Bandicoot, taking one party walk down and change it into an open world. So let us not ramble and talk no more about this hated poor little bubber of a gem. Crash to Insanity, written by the director of Invader Sim and writer of various other cartoons like Ren Stimpy, Animaniacs and Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons, and developed by a company who made all those gold Lego games and a few Pixar games, or aka Traveller's Tales Oxford Studio. With Calibration of Sierra, we start our game with a sexy cinematic of Coco running through the fields and an also familiar hand and giggle comes and paralyzes Coco. Oh look, it's a Crash Bandicoot! Pancakes! That's not a Crash Bandicoot. Get out of here! You don't exist! No one even, no one asked for you. No one wanted this change. No one wanted this change. You are not accepted in this society or any other society. Get out! Also, this is kind of gross. There's something weird going on in the bay! Come see! Think about it. He paralyzed Coco to strip her naked and wear her clothes. Neocortex is a furry confirmed! We then see the beginning of our game. That looks like the original Crash, but what happens when I turn right? Holy shit, I can explore Insanity Isle! I can go all directions. Sideways and slantways and long ways and back ways and square ways and front ways and any other ways that you can think of. Uh, we then follow Cortex and have our freedom stripped <laughs> from us. And have a fun little interactive tutorial and little but references from the old games. No more. Then it turns out that Coco's been near Cortex this whole time! What? And we see all the old villains from all the old games! Like, there they all are! <laughs> we then have a good old fashioned three hit boss to start it off. Then Cortex gets angry and he's all like, ah, why do you always have to be so good? Because I made you like this. A lot like that one. We then rumble down a tunnel, and this is where we put the twin! And to insanity! Because you get to whack the shit out of Cortex! <laughs> this is for Wrath of Cortex! And Mind Over Mutants! And Crash Bang Boom! Also, you go through a huge elaborate underground cavern system and you kill some an alien things. Yeah. And whack some crystals and then London Bridge is falling down! La -la 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 -la. After grinding your teeth through your mum's dang vagina, you meet these weird alien birds and put your insanity eye at risk. How could you? 
We're going to destroy your precious islands. The good. You won't be around to see it. So Core takes us all like, You've you got have to help, help me, Crash. Crash. You heard them. They want to destroy our island home, humiliate and enslave you, and steal my brain. So you're just like, oh, well, okay, fuck, see if I can get her right. Welcome to Insanity Isles, where we have the native lands of the Palpu Papuans, the beautiful nature of Mario's piranha plant, and bees. Ah! But when Mr. Bear gets a little rumbly tumbly, all of this can be enjoyed by chasing after Neocortex. Seriously though, the antics on this are so insane. And let me just point out this guy. First boss in the first game. Integration in this game is amazing and that's why I love it so much. You come across a totem statue that the evil tweeters make alive. Be careful not to touch it after you defeat him though, or you'll die and the gods will put a curse on your soul and everybody in your family. So you have to fight him again, because you die if you touch him, but he's dead, I don't know. We enter what seems to be the hub of this world, a snow down totally opposite of Tropical Island, of which is Cortex's lair. Classic Cortex forgets his key to his lair. So we gotta go around this totally elaborate way to get to the other entrance. Don't die too many times though, or else you'll throw your controller at the next <laughs> one you see when you find out that the game takes you uh, the outside of the ship, which means you have to defeat all these fuckers again. Jump through all these fucking hurdles, become fucking Mario and avoid Donkey Kong's fucking barrels and... The best part about this part is that the music integrates so beautifully with every section you're in. Part of this game is sexually glued over with the atmosphere it wants from this fucking amazing soundtrack. Spiral Mouth, you sexy Archibald band. I wish you were still here with me. And yeah, that's right, an Archibald band voiced this whole goddamn video game soundtrack. Once we've defeated all the bosses, that's Uka Uka, Engen, Rusty Walrus, Embryo, and Entrance, in this small gap of time, you can finally go back to Cortex's lair and be like, Yo, teach, give me a break. It's time for school. Because we got, because we, we got to go back. Because we got to go to school. What school, you may ask? Well, for well, Madam Amberley's Academy of. Where we meet this little cutie called Nina Cortex. My daughter, uh, niece. Neo Cortex's niece. Uh, it's implied that he's got a daughter, but mm, I means he, yeah. Who wants to touch that thing? She had been mechanically alternated by the touch of Neo Cortex, so she has robot arms. And this part of the game, we get to be other characters, which is superbly unexpected. Neo Cortex gets the shoot, but yeah, he's he's a, he's shit. All right. I just love him because of his character. I shall crush you like a fury once you are. You are nothing to me, for I am the great and all-powerful Neo Cortex. You infant power vermin, how dare you walk manhandle and manipulate me? Rest assured, I will take my terrible vengeance upon... And Nina, who can, uh... Can't do this thing. One thing I hate about this level, though, is that every hallway looks the same, and you never get a proper chance to explore the school. This part almost feels like it's part of its own game. It feels like a slight raccoon level. After destroying the school, Neo Cortex does a shitty boss with Tits McGee over here. While Crash gets good old. Pig, dingo, crocodile with pants and flamethrowers pants in the sewer. Don't ask me how he got here, but I, uh, I, I guess because gators live in the sewers and shit. And we leave to go back to the tenth dimension. Your fur is so soft and warm. Oh look, it's Ultimate Dimension Crash! How non cliche of them! Ah yes, 10th Dimension Insanity Isle. Where we repeat the last 6 hours of gameplay and squeeze it into two. Seriously, we do the chase again, and we do the ski thing again, and the long 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 god dang bit going through the evil twins lair. This bit is hell if you don't have a million lives. Unlike me. Seriously, a lot like the part where you gotta defeat Engine and all his pals, you have to be careful of every move, because if you fuck it up and get a game over, you're gonna start all over again and make sure not to throw the controller into the closest no see. After a while, these fuckers come back. Don't ask how, I guess, because, like, gators live in the sewers and. But I think he might want his gems back. Oh my god, Spyro! Bam! 
baby! Look at him being a cameo. Fucking sexy ass. Final boss. Fight. Test. You might. Cortex does a thing, then that Cortex does a thing. Then Crash gets to be super motherfucking badass and be Mecha Bandicoot. If only Transformers gave me the same fuck years as this did. And the evil twins get eaten by evil Crash and Neo Cortex backstabs Very Crash done. and backfires as usual. Then the Crash dance lives on. Paint to black, scroll the names, play the happy song. And that is motherfucking Crash to Insanity. The story's so good, I wish it was a movie. The game's so meh, I wish it was better. But Cole, why is this your favorite Crash game if it's only meh? Well, myself, let me tell you why. This Crash game is my favorite because it was the last Crash game before the... Uh, before the nightmare happened. Oh, Fanny! Ah! It's an excellent combination of having the platform formula and the crash cam. It's awesome because you get to see all your favourite characters interact and also introduce new ones. You get to see the full Insanity Isle and explore it, and that's amazing in itself. For me, it's the same feeling of being behind the scenes in a movie. Seeing one of your childhood hero homes and allowing you to explore it. That's why it's my favourite Crash game. Now here's why the game side of it lacks. For one thing, this game doesn't lack is so many goddamn glitches. Look at all these flawless glitches. Oh my god, this game is n n n not quite done. Not quite done at all. The unfairness of the unforgiving checkpoints and kill spots that are ridiculously unfair. The open worldness of this game gets restricted at points and makes you repeat stupid missions to get somewhere you really want to explore. Also, Nina's level is pretty broken and need to be glistened over a bit more. I think if Naughty Dog would have done it, they would have done it right. But they were too busy with jackass and money talking of Crash. All in all, though, I give Crash to Insanity a 7 out of 10. I'll play it again as I have many, many times. And yeah, I recommend you give it a try if you have a PlayStation 2 or Xbox. Anyway, that's me. Thanks for watching. Click like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you whenever. Toodles!